This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Bernard Hopkins is best known for his body of work in the middleweight division. Hopkins won the IBF middleweight title in April 1995, when he beat Segundo Mercado by seventh round stoppage. After making a dozen title defenses over the next six years, Hopkins won a unification bout against Keith Holmes to win the WBC belt in April 2001, and in September of that year, Hopkins became the undisputed middleweight world champion with a dominant performance against Felix Trinidad, which added the WBA belt to his collection. Hopkins eventually went on to become the very first four-belt champion in boxing history when he defeated Oscar De La Hoya in September 2004. That victory made him the undisputed IBF, WBC, WBA, WBO middleweight world champion, making Bernard the godfather of the modern four-belt era. His middleweight reign of dominance ultimately came to an end when Hopkins lost back-to-back -back close decisions against Jermaine Taylor in 2005. So at the end of the day, Hopkins had 20 consecutive successful defenses of a major world title, including six successful defenses as undisputed champion, and he was the first four-belt undisputed champion in the modern era. When Hopkins lost his rematch against Taylor, Bernard was just a month shy of turning 41, and even though he was competitive in both of his losses against Taylor, where many people believe he deserved to win the rematch, it appeared this was the end of the road for the executioner. He had been an elite level middleweight fighting at the championship level for more than 12 years, and he was an old man competing in a younger man's game. But little did we know at that time, Bernard Hopkins would soon become a modern day ageless warrior in the footsteps of past greats like Archie Moore, the old mongoose himself. After losing his rematch against Taylor, Hopkins skipped right over 168 and jumped straight to 175 when he challenged Ring Magazine light heavyweight champion Antonio Tarver. At the time, Tarver was widely viewed as the greatest light heavyweight in the world. Tarver was the man who won two out of three against former Hopkins conqueror, the great Roy Jones Jr. And the defining match in that trilogy was their rematch when Tarver stopped Roy in round two with a brutal knockout. And in his last bout going into the Hopkins fight, Tarver had won a lopsided 12 round decision in his rubber match against Roy. So just to set the stage here, Hopkins was 41 years old and coming off back-to-back -back losses at 160, jumping up two divisions, and Tarver was the top dog at 175 coming off of a trilogy winning victory against the legendary Roy Jones. Naturally, Tarver was pegged as the clear favorite going into this one. June 10th, 2006 at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Hopkins landed a sweet right in the opening round, and this would become the story of the fight. With a masterful blend of defense, movement, anticipation, and impeccable timing, Hopkins dominated the action throughout. He dropped Tarver with a sneaky right hand in round five, which caused Tarver to touch down, and Hopkins coasted. Hopkins never allowed Tarver to establish any type of effective rhythm, and Hopkins was firing on all cylinders. By the later rounds in the fight, Tarver had looked mentally drained, as Hopkins was continuing to put on a one-sided clinic in the sweet science. At the end of 12 rounds, Hopkins was awarded a lopsided unanimous decision with all three judges scoring at 118 to 109 for Bernard. Hopkins was recognized as the Ring Magazine champion at 175, and he announced his retirement after the fight. This was seemingly a perfect ending to a wonderful career. But Bernard's retirement didn't last long, and Bernard made a comeback in July 2007 when he faced former undisputed junior middleweight world champion Ronald Winky Wright. This fight took place at a contracted weight of 170 pounds. Going into this one, Winky hadn't lost a fight in more than seven years, although he did have a draw against the man who ended Hopkins' middleweight reign, Jermaine Taylor. 
Winky was a skilled, crafty, smart guy like Bernard. And even though Winky had been competing at 160, with the exception of the Tarver fight, the same could be said of Bernard. The story in this fight was that Bernard was able to effectively disrupt Winky's groove by neutralizing his jab and outfighting him in tight. Bernard never allowed Winky to consistently create the space he needed to be effective. Hopkins won comfortably by 12-round unanimous decision. In April 2008, Hopkins squared off against longtime undefeated super middleweight champion Joe Calzaghi. Early in the opening round, Hopkins walked Joe into a beautiful 1-2 that sent Calzaghi down. Calzaghi beat the count, and he was having trouble establishing a rhythm over the next few rounds. But Joe started doing a better job in the middle portions of the fight. And near the end, Calzaghi was almost always the one taking the initiative, and he continued throwing more and landing more. But Hopkins continued fighting intelligently, and he was exhibiting great defensive aptitude, and he was still landing with some tricky shots. Calzaghi was generally out hustling Hopkins down the final stretch, but the executioner was still holding his own and finding ways to land effectively. At the conclusion of 12 very competitive rounds of action, Calzaghi won by a close split decision. Once again, the obituaries for Hopkins' boxing career were being prematurely written throughout the boxing media. Unable to secure a rematch with Calzaghi, Hopkins instead looked in the direction of the undefeated middleweight champion Kelly Pavlik. This was the man who twice beat Jermaine Taylor, the same man who had ended Hopkins' long and dominant reign at middleweight. The fight happened on October 18, 2008. Hopkins was just a few months shy of 44 years old, and the undefeated 26-year-old Pavlik was widely considered to be among the 10 best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world at that time. The fight wound up being a one-sided mismatch of epic proportions. Bernard Hopkins put on a damn fine display in the art of hitting without getting hit. Hopkins was brilliantly controlling the range, and he thoroughly outboxed Pavlik throughout all 12 rounds, which earned the executioner a lopsided unanimous decision. The extraordinary victory put Hopkins in a very tricky spot. Bernard had become the personification of a high-risk, lose-lose situation, unable to secure a bout against Carl the Cobra Frotch, and still unable to coax Calzaghi into a rematch. Bernard was out of action more than a year before finally having a tune-up bout against Enrique Ornelas in December 2009 in his hometown of Philadelphia. Bernard won the fight by a wide 12-round unanimous decision. This wound up paving the way to a rematch against Roy Jones Jr. The two had first met way back in May 1993, when Roy outpointed Bernard for the vacant IBF middleweight belt. The rematch happened almost 17 years later in April 2010. While both boxers were older and past their best, unlike Roy, Bernard still remained a formidable talent and it showed in the rematch. Hopkins controlled the action without much issue, despite getting hit several times in the back of the head. Hopkins was awarded a lopsided 12-round unanimous decision, and it appeared this might possibly be the end of the road for the ageless warrior. Meanwhile, in August 2010, WBC light heavyweight champion Jean Pascal scored an upset victory against Chad Dawson. Going into that one, Dawson was viewed as a pound-for-pound -pound elite and the top guy at 175. It was a technical unanimous decision for Pascal, as the fight was stopped in round 11 because of a cut suffered by Dawson. Pascal won on the cards, and Dawson had a rematch clause that allowed for both boxers to have an interim fight before the rematch. This paved the way to a showdown between Pascal and Hopkins. This provided Bernard with a chance to become the oldest champion in boxing history, a record that was held by Big George Foreman. The fight happened in December 2010, and it did not begin well for the old man, who was dropped in the opening round, and he was dropped again in round three. It appeared as if the 28-year-old champion was going to prove too youthful for the 45-year-old Hopkins. 
But by the fifth round, Hopkins started establishing a good rhythm. And with a combination of terrific bodywork, tremendous ring smarts, and KG veteran tactics, Hopkins had seized the momentum and he began to thoroughly outbox the younger champion. At the end of 12 rounds of action, despite suffering the two early knockdowns, it had appeared that Hopkins had done enough to win, but the fight was officially ruled a draw, denying Bernard his chance to make boxing history. This led to a situation where Dawson was entitled to a rematch, per their prior clause, and the WBC had likewise mandated a rematch between Hopkins and Pascal following the controversial draw. Ultimately, a deal was worked out where Hopkins and Pascal would have their rematch, and Dawson was guaranteed a shot at the winner, provided he won his next fight in the meantime, which he did on the undercard. The date was May 21st, 2011, and the now 46-year-old Hopkins would receive another shot at making boxing history. It wound up being an extremely entertaining encounter that frequently saw both boxers slugging away in tight quarters. But this night would belong to Bernard Hopkins, and despite making a strong account of himself, Pascal was unable to build any real momentum. Hopkins was simply too determined and would not be denied. And down the final stretch, it was old man Hopkins who had greater reserves in the tank as he outworked and out-hustled the young champion to close out the show. At the conclusion of 12 action-packed rounds, Bernard Hopkins was awarded a unanimous decision victory, marking him as the oldest boxer during the long, rich history of professional boxing to ever win a major world title. Hopkins and Dawson met in October 2011. In round two, Dawson threw Hopkins across the ring where Bernard injured his arm, and the verdict was initially ruled a TKO win for Dawson. But after an appeal, it was officially changed to a no contest, and Hopkins retained his title. The two had a rematch in April 2012, and Hopkins was unable to cope with the speed and quickness of Dawson, who was awarded a 12-round majority decision. Despite one judge scoring it a draw, Dawson had clearly outboxed Bernard, and once again, members of the boxing media were prematurely writing Bernard's boxing obituary. Indeed, this definitely felt like the end of the road for the ageless warrior, but like a phoenix rising from the ashes. In March 2013, Hopkins got the opportunity to challenge the undefeated IBF light heavyweight champion Tavoris Cloud. It wound up being another vintage performance from old man Hopkins especially in the later portions of the fight, where Hopkins was consistently beating Cloud to the punch, getting off first, and controlling the rhythm with a deliberate pace. At the conclusion of 12 rounds, Hopkins was awarded a unanimous decision victory, enabling him to break his own record, where at 48 years old, he once again became the oldest boxer in history to win a major world title. In October 2013, Hopkins defended that title when he won a lopsided 12-round unanimous decision against Kaoru Murat. Then in April 2014, Hopkins squared off in a unification bout against WBA Super Duper Champion Babit Shumanov. It was another very strong showing from the ageless warrior. Hopkins decidedly outboxed Shumanov without much issue, even dropping him in round 11. Strangely enough, Hopkins only wound up winning this one by a split decision, which was rather shocking as Bernard had clearly won the contest by a comfortable margin. With the victory, Bernard Hopkins became the oldest boxer in history to win a unification bout. Bernard was 49 years old, which is simply extraordinary. That wound up being the final victory during the long and illustrious career of the great Bernard Hopkins. In November 2014, Hopkins would lose in another unification bout against WBO champion Sergei Kovalev. Just a couple of months shy of 50, Bernard was unable to cope with the talented power puncher who proved to have great skills in addition to his power. But even here, a prime force like Sergei Kovalev was unable to stop the iron-chinned warrior. 
Hopkins made one final ill-advised comeback two years later in December 2016, when he was just a few weeks shy of turning 51. And Hopkins was stopped by future champion Joe Smith Jr. It was the only time in 67 professional contests that the great Bernard was ever stopped inside the distance. When you look back at the incredible career of Bernard Hopkins, even if you just focus on what he accomplished after turning 41, even if you ignore everything he accomplished at middleweight, and just look at what he did at 175, where he was considered a top 10 talent throughout his 40, stretching the span of nearly 10 years, it's simply amazing. Even if you just look at what he did at 175 and ignore everything else he did at 160, he had a damn fine Hall of Fame caliber career. But when you combine that with everything he ever did do at 160, where he is one of the very best to ever do it during the long rich history of the middleweight division, what you're left with is a complete and total badass of epic proportions. The one and only, the ageless warrior, Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. One of the very best to ever lace him up. Indeed, a bona fide all-time great by any measurable standard. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.